Thank you for taking the time to learn about the FAME family of fungicides from FMC featuring the active ingredient phylloxystrobin. In this brief presentation, you'll see why the active ingredient in FAME is more than just another strobe, as it outperforms the competition on key diseases like preventative and curative brown patch, summer patch, fairy ring, and pythium root dysfunction. FAME is available in a variety of pack sizes and combinations. FAME SC is available in a 16 ounce, 64 ounce, and two and a half gallon pack size. FAME G, granular formulation, is available in 25 pound bags, while FAME Plus C, a premix of phylloxystrobin and chlorothalonil, comes in 2.5 gallon jugs, while FAME Plus T is phylloxystrobin plus tebuconazole, available in 16 ounce and one gallon sizes. What makes phylloxystrobin different? Number one, phylloxystrobin is very efficient in attaching itself to target pathogens. That means it gets into the plant and starts working quickly. The quick uptake of the product, with both xylem and translaminar movement, help provide even distribution, which results in even more predictable coverage and efficacy. FAME provides a solid foundation as the first application as part of a fungicide program. As you'll see in following slides, FAME is performing consistently in both university trials as well as in the field. When we say FAME is not just another strobe, what does that mean? Well, as you review the other strobes on the slide, you'll see that phylloxystrobin is simply built differently. This innovation allows for xylem movement in the turf, which helps improve its efficacy. When we explain the benefits of FAME fungicide, an easy way to recall them is by the halo of protection it provides. This includes three main points. First, its primary target diseases of preventative and curative brown patch. In addition to brown patch, it also provides excellent control of summer patch, fairy ring, and pythium root dysfunction. Secondly, its rapid mobility. The quick uptake of the product helps provide even distribution, which results in even more predictable coverage and efficacy. With its 15 minute rain fastness, it also takes away any concern of pop-up thunderstorms when it's time to decide whether to spray. Finally, the plant health benefits. Another added feature of FAME SC is the proven plant health benefits it provides. When you consider basic agronomics, thicker density and a healthier root system combined to fend off disease pressure, these plant health benefits are apparent when applying FAME. Let's take a look at some data. Here you see the brown patch trial performed by Dr. Kearns of NC State at 28 day interval on tall fescue. Notice how FAME outperforms the competition with no breakthrough. In this curative brown patch trial on creeping bentgrass, FAME performed very well at a 21 day interval. In this summer patch trial performed at Rutgers University on Kentucky bluegrass, note the performance of FAME's ability to control summer patch over an interval of 28 days. In a trial on fairy ring control by Dr. Fidanza of Penn State, FAME SC performed best, better than the competition. FAME SC provides excellent control of pythium root dysfunction. In this trial on bentgrass greens, FAME provided much better control than insignia, and this trial performed at NC State. Today, I would like to talk about some effective management strategies that you may be able to implement on uh, perennial nut sedges and Kalinga. Um, a couple of things that we want to think about as we get into this uh, discussion is uh, just how competitive these weeds are. You know, back in the early 60s, uh, they did some biology, really interesting biology work on yellow nut sedge, and they planted one tuber in a growing container and left it there for a year undisturbed uh, and from that uh, 1900 shoots and 6900 tubers were produced uh, and that's quite amazing to me 
uh, to think that just from one tuber, that much reproductive structure and, and plant material can be produced. Uh, now, in a turf grass situation, obviously there's mowing involved, and so those numbers aren't going to be uh, that high. But just think about it. every time a new plant is produced, that plant is fully capable of producing more tubers, which leads to more plants. Uh, and if not properly managed, uh, you can have a really high number of, of tubers in your soil seed bank. Um, very similar with purple nut sedge. You know, research has shown that uh, purple nut sedge tubers can develop six to eight weeks after foliar emergence. I find that interesting in that if you think about how long the growing season is where you find purple nut sedge, uh, if not properly managed, you can end up with a lot of tubers again. Most of these tubers with yellow nut sedge or in purple nut sedge are found within the top 10 inches of the soil. Um, so over time, that number can grow exponentially. So we have to be mindful of that and hopefully we can get into the nuts and bolts of things uh, as we talk about how to manage these weeds. We talk about perennial Kalingas, uh, two that I'd like to take uh, into consideration that are uh, probably more commonly found on golf courses as false green Kalinga and then green Kalinga. Uh, it's thought that false green Kalinga is more cold tolerant than, than green Kalinga based on its distribution pattern. Uh, you can find false green Kalinga as far north as Connecticut as you begin to come further south into the transition zone. Uh, that's where you start to see more um, uh, green Kalinga. And then uh, just from observations and, and stories that I've heard, uh, it appears that perennial Kalingas tend to uh, withstand much lower moving heights than uh, nut sedge can. So you, you see these types of things when you see a, a sedge material uh, or plant on a putting surface, you dig in that, that profile and you pull up the, the rhizomes that are associated with uh, perennial Kalingas. Uh, we talk about sedge habitat and, you know, ideally they like to be in, in low lying areas where you don't have very good soil uh, moisture or drainage. But the fact of the matter is that, that sedges and Kalingas are fully capable of growing uh, wherever they please, right? Um, how many times have you seen sedge and Kalinga on bunker faces or in, in this picture on the side of a slope uh, where they have no real business being based on the, the, the description of where they like to be? Uh, and I think that's what's uh, frustrating about these weeds and what makes uh, people so mad about these weeds and trying to effectively manage them. They don't, they don't play by the rules. When we try to identify sedges, you know, the first thing to look for is the triangle on the stem, the triangular shaped stem. That's a very easy way uh, to um, differentiate sedge from a grass uh, or a broadleaf weed. Um, and if everything were that simple, we'd have a great day, right? But unfortunately, that's where the simplicity ends as far as identifying sedges. Uh, I say that without a seed head. You know, in a lot of cases, like purple and yellow nut sedge, the seed heads are so distinct that you can pick them out fairly clearly with the maroon color seed head of purple nut sedge and more of a golden color that you see with yellow nut sedge. Um, but in a um, fine turf situation where you're mowing often, uh, you very rarely have a seed head to go by. Some other things that you may be able to look at though, uh, in a higher cut turf, not necessarily in, in a fairway situation or a tee box, but as you get into the rough, uh, you may be able to see these types of situations occur. This was actually in a Bermuda grass rough where they had both purple nut sedge and yellow nut sedge present in the same area. The way to do this is if you uh, find the plants and they're producing newly emerged leaf material uh, between mowings, hopefully, um, the picture on the left shows you the difference of a um, yellow nut sedge leaf tip, which is very fine or pointed compared to the image on the right, which is a purple nut sedge. Hopefully you can see that it's more of a blunt shaped leaf tip. So uh, those are some things that you can look for when trying to determine yellow nut sedge versus purple nut sedge. Okay. Um, we talk about perennial Kalingas. Um, there are a lot of differences among these types of weeds. Uh, they are different uh, than perennial nut sedges. We'll talk a little bit more about that, um, mainly because they produce rhizomes and not tubers. Uh, trying to separate green Kalinga from false green Kalinga is very difficult. 
Uh, they look very similarly, both from a vegetative standpoint, as well as the seed head that they produce. One of the indications that could help steer you in, in one way or the other is when these plants are flowering or when they produce seed heads. A green Kalinga, this is an image of green Kalinga in a Bermuda grass rough in July. Uh, green Kalinga tends to flower all through the summer, whereas false green Kalinga is more photo period dependent and um, flowers more in the fall. So those are a few things to look at when you're comparing green Kalinga versus false green Kalinga. These weeds uh, reproduce uh, very differently. Uh, when you look at the perennial Kalingas, they primarily um, reproduce by rhizomes. They're kind of red to purple in, in, in color. The image on the left is a, is a segment of about two inches or so. Uh, these are very aggressive weeds. They form very dense mats uh, that outcompete turf grass, but they also can produce viable seeds. So it's kind of a double whammy with perennial Kalingas. Um, yellow nut sedge and purple nut sedge rely heavily on tuber production to reproduce and survive year after year. They produce seed, um, but the survival um, of those seedlings is, is very minimal. Proper application timing of, of, of herbicides uh, is critical as well for long-term management, and it doesn't matter if it's a pre-emergence pre herbicide like Echelon or uh, post-emergence herbicides. The timing is very important because what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, place that herbicide when that weed is most susceptible to, to that product. Okay, If we look at the image on the left, or the, or the diagram rather, it's uh, um, the growth habit of yellow nut sedge. Um, the, the main game for yellow and purple nut sedge management is minimizing new tuber formation. We want to reduce that population as best we can. So if we properly time our applications before new tubers are being produced, in this particular situation that would be about mid-June to late June, we can dramatically impact future populations. The, the diagram on the right is of uh, biomass uh, production of Kalinga or green Kalinga. Uh, its highest peak is in July, August. So we can make applications in July, August, but it, and be effective, but it'll oftentimes in those situations, um, it may require sequential applications. So how can we back that application up and target earlier in the growth stage of Kalinga, say late May, early June, and be more effective allowing the turf grass to be more competitive in those situations and fill in voids or, or just choke out um, additional weed spaces where, where, where it needs to. <clears throat> I mentioned uh, pre-emergence applications with Echelon. You know, this is a timing where we try to uh, make these applications just prior to yellow nut sedge and Kalinga emergence. On the right, you see where Echelon was applied and, and on the left of this image, uh, is an untreated area. Uh, it's filled with annual grasses and Kalinga. So if timed appropriately, this can be a very effective tool to start you off on the right foot uh, at the beginning of the season. So a uh, very nice product uh, to, to manage for Kalinga and yellow nut sedge. Uh, we talk about post-emergence materials. I dismiss NXT certainly is a very valuable tool, um, especially when it comes to tuber viability. It's very effective on, on reducing tuber viability over time um, in both cool and warm season turf for yellow nut sedge and perennial Kalinga management. Uh, Dismiss South is a, an effective product for purple nut sedge management in warm season turf. So check the label and, and uh, make sure which one, uh, which perennial, excuse me, which turf grass type is labeled because not all of them are labeled uh, for Dismiss South. So very effective post-emergence tools, you know, timed correctly. Um, a couple of examples of that is how NXT reduces tuber viability. This is a two-year study where treatments were applied consecutively to the same plots over two years. And after those two years, we harvested tubers, randomly selected a set number of those tubers, and then grew them up in the greenhouse. And we calculated or, or counted what uh, emerged. So you see in the untreated on the far right, about 60% of the tubers that were planted in the greenhouse emerged. You compare that to Dismiss NXT, um, about 20%. So you see a dramatic reduction 
uh, when you properly time those applications for yellow nut sedge control. And that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to reduce that tuber population over time so that we can turn that competitive advantage over to the turf grass. From a purple nut sedge standpoint, Dismiss South is a great, is a great tool. Uh, very fast, uh, effective at control up front, but it continues to last uh, for long-term control. Um, so very nice, and that's one of the advantages of, of, of a Dismiss South over certain active ingredients is that it has that nice speed of control up front, uh, but doesn't lose the long-term control. I mentioned false screen Kalinga earlier uh, in the presentation and how we time those applications to be effective. Uh, this is a particular trial that was done on a creeping bent grass fairway where we had to do two applications because, again, if you remember the growth biomass production, July, August are the highest uh, in, the, in the growth stage of green Kalinga. But effective control can still be made, but you just need two applications with products. But the advantage of Dismiss South, or excuse me, Dismiss NXT in this case, uh, you get very fast visual control with long term control as well. Typically, we like to try to target earlier in the growth stage of this weed uh, because, again, to take full advantage of when that weed is most susceptible uh, to uh, post emergence applications. So, just a few things to remember to, uh, to wrap up here making sure we're establishing that competitive turf, doing what we need to do to grow and improve the environment uh, that our turf is growing in, keying in on when those applications need to be made based on when that weed is going to be most susceptible to those applications so we can impact the long-term population, whether it's reducing the, the mat density of Kalinga or if it is impacting tuber viability over time. Welcome to FMC True Champions product review where we will be looking at Triple Crown Insecticide, more specifically at controlling pest of cool season turf. Triple Crown is a unique three active ingredient formulation. This innovation is essentially the emulsification of bifenthrin and zeta cypermethrin into a suspension of imidacloprid. The formulation allows for control of translamator, systemic, and contact activity of above and below ground pests. During the presentation, we will focus on annual bluegrass weevils, commonly referred to ABWs, laceous ants, and crane flies. The graph on the screen shows the level of control seven days after initial treatment with Triple Crown at the target application rate of 0.8 ounces per thousand square feet. Understanding the ABW life cycle will aid in developing a highly effective pesticide program for this pest. The detailed life cycle depicted by Dr. Pat Vidham highlights adult movement from overwintering sites to developmental stages of larva. Additionally, the picture shows multiple larval development stages and movement back to overwintering sites for a complete yearly life cycle. Understanding when this insect moves through its life cycle will aid in developing targeted spray programs and efficient control. We will explore two such programs in the next slide. FMC is recommending two programs when using Triple Crown for ABW management. Program number one goes out at the 35 fluid ounce per acre rate targeting first generation adults typically when the forsythia stage is at half green and half gold. Program number two is a split application program targeting ABWs with added benefits on white grub and ant control, going out at 25 fluid ounces per acre with the target rate, typically timed around the dogwood full bloom stage. With a second application, approximately 40 to 45 days later, at the target rate of 25 fluid ounces for control on added insects such as ants, chinch bugs, ticks, and white grubs. Studies have shown that Triple Crown provides control of the larval stage of ABWs at 21 days after treatment with almost 90% control at the targeted rate of 0.8 ounces per thousand square feet.
Triple Crown also keeps ABW larval densities below the spring damage threshold that's typically implemented in the industry. As you can see in the chart, at 21 days after control, Triple Crown was well below that threshold at 0.8 ounces per 1,000 square feet. Moving on to ant control. Triple Crown provides fast control of laceous ants. As you can see in the chart, at one day after treatment, Triple Crown has provided 90% or better control at the targeted rate of 0.8 ounce per 1,000 square feet. Triple Crown also provides residual control of laceous ants. As you can see on the chart, at 64 days after treatment, greater than 80% control was achieved at the Triple Crown target rate of 0.8 ounces per 1,000 square feet. Research has shown two application periods will provide optimal control on ant activity. The chart highlights May-June for spring applications and September-October for late summer early fall applications to maximize your control on ant activity. The third insect we will cover today is crane flies. The top row of pictures on the screen highlights damage caused by larval activity. The bottom row of pictures moves through phases of the crane fly life cycle, which we will explore on the next slide. The crane fly also requires an understanding of its life cycle to develop a successful control program. As you can see on the screen, the picture is taken from the New York State IPM program, highlighting various stages of crane fly development from egg to adult. A comprehensive program for crane fly management can include biological controls, cultural practices, and chemical applications. For more information on biological controls, please contact your local extension office. Culturally, incidences of larval activity are higher in problematic wet soils. Implementing cultural practices such as aeration to improve soil drainage will aid in your program management. Chemically, products like Triple Crown, which contain imidacloprid, works best when targeting spring and fall larval activity. In addition to those we've already reviewed, Triple Crown insecticide controls several other key insect pests. These include mole crickets, red imported fire ants, white grubs, and chinch bugs. With Triple Crown insecticide, one application lasts months, saving time and labor. Triple Crown requires no tank mixing. With the addition of Zeta Cypermethrin, it allows for rapid knockdown, has an effective amount of imidacloprid for below ground control of specific pests. As you can see from the chart, equivalent to industry standards, Triple Crown has provided enough of the right AI ratios to make it easy as a pre-mixed product. To sum up our presentation today, why choose Triple Crown? We can focus on the broad spectrum approach of one product for above and below ground pest with control of over 30 insects. The rapid quick knockdown with the addition of Zeta Cypermethrin provides excellent control on key pests in this product mix. The residual control, having three active ingredients, provides equal residual control of key pests versus higher priced competitive products. Also comes in the convenient pre-mix packaging, allowing no tank mixing with that addition again of that Zeta Cypermethrin for rapid knockdown control. And finally, it is cost effective, allowing you to have a single product to treat areas for a lower cost for more pests versus competitive products in the marketplace. I'd like to thank you today for viewing this video. If you'd like other information on FMC products, please go to fmcprosolutions.com or contact your local market specialist to obtain that information. And always remember to follow label recommendations on any products that you use for chemical applications. As part of the FMC True Champions program, FMC is proud to announce its initiative with the NALP 
the National Association of Landscape Professionals. FMC will provide lawn care companies a free NALP membership, as well as discounted memberships for years two and three, which include exclusive resources to help lawn care companies grow their businesses. For more information, visit fmctruechampions.com or ask your local FMC market specialist. The many resources they will have access to are listed here. It's all part of FMC's commitment to the lawn care industry to help lawn care companies transition from working in their business to working on their business. Echelon Herbicide is a patented formulation that is both root and shoot absorbed. Echelon 4SC Herbicide controls weeds from the foliage down and from the root up. Echelon is a selective pre-emergent and early post-emergent herbicide for the control of sedges, crabgrass, and goosegrass. It also provides pre-emergent control of POA. FMC's Echelon Herbicide Performance Assurance Program for Bermuda grass can be utilized with confidence to support its control. Echelon Herbicide, applied according to label directions for pre-emergent applications, will provide at least 100 days of pre-emergent control of crabgrass, goosegrass, yellow nutsedge, and green kalinga. If it does not, FMC will provide an appropriate product to control the remaining weeds above at no cost to the user. Ask your FMC market specialist for more details. Solitaire Herbicide provides a one-two punch to attack both the foliage and the roots, giving quick results and complete control for both grassy and broadleaf weeds. This dual mode of action is absorbed through both the roots and the foliage for quick knockdown and broad spectrum control. Solitaire Herbicide provides a number of benefits, including the premix removes the cost and hassle of tank mixing, also attacking a broad spectrum of broadleaf and grassy weeds with a single product, controlling and suppressing over 60 weeds, and controlling the weeds in multiple growth stages. You'll see fast, visible results that you can see within days. Finally, in this comparison chart, note Solitaire has 34% more crabgrass control and three times the sedge control power than Q4. For Kalinga, Solitaire is hands down the better product over sedge hammer. Kalita fungicide is the latest fungicide from FMC. Available in 2021, this powerful premix will combine the novel SDHI Fluindapir with the next generation DMI Flutriophol. Kalita will offer proven turf safety as it targets bipolaris leaf spot, take all root rot, large patch, as well as anthracnose and as a strong rotation partner for brown patch. Look for more at GIS 2021 and throughout the 2021 season. Ensure your end user customers are enrolled in the FMC True Champions program. The FMC True Champions program is built upon three pillars, product rewards, business building solutions, and an industry commitment. Whether they be lawn or golf customers, they will benefit from enrolling to be eligible for rebate programs offered throughout the year. The business building component serves as a resource for FMC product assurances as well as timely content that will be added to help superintendents manage their course or provide video, tools, and resources to help lawn care operators grow their business. To enroll in the FMC True Champions program, please visit fmctruechampions.com. For additional questions about True Champions program or any of the products in the FMC portfolio, please contact your local FMC market specialist. To find an FMC rep near you, please visit fmcprosolutions.com and click on Find an FMC Rep. Thanks for your time to learn about the FMC product portfolio, and thank you for supporting FMC.